Hi, in today's video I'll show you how you can make a spot welding point bottom with just a handful of components which you can easily find for cheap. The whole circuit is built around the SG3525 PWMIC. Before you get the actual working of the circuit, let's discuss about how you'll power it. In my design, I have made it such that it will be working with two series lithium ion or polymer batteries which will have a nominal voltage of 7.4 volts and so because you need around 10 volts to completely turn on the MOSFETs as well as operate the IC without accidental shutdowns you will need a DC to DC boost converter to step that voltage up to 12 volts optionally you can use three series lithium ion batteries and eliminate the boost converter entirely but as per the circuit, the 7.4 volts is fed to a DC to DC boost converter. In this case, it's a cheap MT3608 DC to DC boost converter, and the output is set to 12 volts. C3 stabilizes this output. C7 eliminates any high frequency noise present within the input power supply. The ICP nodes and other connections are as shown. You can omit pin 3 and 4 because you do not need them in this case. Pin 12 is ground. 13 and 15 are connected to 12 volts as shown. The frequency is set by the resistor R7 capacitor C5 and to some extent the resistor R1. The formula is given by 1 or over C5 into 0.3 times R7 plus 3 R1. So the frequency is majorly controlled by the value of R7 and C5. R1 also controls the dead time, that is the time when neither of the output MOSFETs are switching or when the outputs at pin 11 and 14 are both low. The frequency in this case is set to 64 Hz and so the output frequency will be half of that which is 32 kHz which is good for a switch mode power supply because we need it to operate at a high frequency so as to minimize the entire size of the welding inverter. Pin 1 and 2 are the inputs to the internal amplifier. Connect pin 1 to ground through R6 and C2 as shown and the compensation pin 9 to ground via C2 as shown. The second input that is pin 2 to the air amplifier is connected to a potential divider made up of R8, RV1 and R9 as shown. This is powered by the reference voltage from pin 16 that is 5 volts which is stabilized by the capacitor C6 as shown. And by adjusting the potentiometer V1, you can straight away alter the feedback voltage to the non inverting input at pin 2 and so alter the output duty cycle or pass with moderation. And this way, you will alter the time the MOSFETs are conducting and the overall output power of the inverter. Pin 8 is for soft start and you connect it to ground group as modern microfarad electrolytic capacitor as shown. This will ensure that initially when the circuit is powered, the output speed of RAM will increase in duty cycle from 0 up to the set point by the amplifier and this basically will minimize the initial stress on the switching MOSFETs. The working is simple. The outputs of pin 11 and 14 are complementary of each other that is when 11 is high 14 is low and vice versa. Let's assume in our first scenario pin 11 is high and 14 is low. So there will be about 12 volts at the gate of the MOSFET Q2 and this will bias it and cause it to conduct. This permits current to flow from the post of the battery through the raw hiding through the MOSFET Q2 and to ground as shown. In the second stage, pin 11 goes low and pin 14 goes high so Q2 is off but Q1 turns on now. Current now flows from the post of the battery through the upper hiding through the MOSFET Q1 and to ground as shown. This completes one oscillation and this repeats about 2000 times per second. The resistors R4 and R5 are gate source distance resistors and they ensure that the MOSFET is completely turned off by basically discharging the gate capacitors of the MOSFETs to ensure that the MOSFETs switch properly. R2 and R3 are current limiting resistors to limit the current flow from the IC to the gates of the MOSFETs which if left uncontrolled can damage the IC. They are rated for 10 ohms and 1 watt. R4 and R5 can be from 1 kilo ohms to 10 kilo ohms. They will all work fine. For the MOSFETs, the IRF3205 will work well because they are rated for 98 amperes. That is if you get the rate quality from the rate manufacturer. Optionally, you can use the IRFZ44 because they can handle more than 90 amperes. 
which is more than we need for this project. Just select MOSFETs with an internal low turn on voltage as well as internal resistance. For the transformer, it is a ferrite cone transformer and preferably a toroidal code cord one. You can easily find this as the output filters in many switch mode power supplies. Just ensure that it is relative range enough. For example, I recommend one with an internal diameter of 1.5 cm. For the windings, the ratio is 6 is to 1. So the voltage is stepped down roughly 6 times, but the current will be stepped up by about 6 times. The primary winding is made up by a parallel arrangement of fine enameled copper wire. For example, if you have access to a 0.3 mm diameter enameled copper wire, I recommend you parallel about 15 of those and wind 6 turns in one direction and 6 turns in the other direction. And the midpoint is the one that is connected to the poster of the battery as shown. For the output, because it has more current, I sure you use more wires like 40 pieces of 0.3 mm enameled copper wire parallel together and it is just one turn. But the final end is made up of a relatively high resistance wire such as iron or aluminium. This will ensure that most of the heating happens here and also make sure that the tip is relatively thinner or has a smaller cross-sectional area to increase its resistance and allow most of the heat to be generated at this point because this is the point that will be used for soldering. Thank you for watching and I hope you have enjoyed this video. If so, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Have a nice time and I'll see you in the next video. Oh,